Hello everyone. So uh, in this series of videos, we are discussing RMCS model of fusion potentials. In the this is the second video of this series. In the first video, we briefly discussed the IFRS 15, and the discussion was more in relation to the terms which will be used. What is the guide? What is the five-step model provided by the company? Having said that, let us proceed with the next step. That is to understand, to have a bit, to have a bit deeper understanding on the different terms. Let us discuss a business scenario. So, let us imagine that uh, we are placing an online order for air condition. So, when we put a online order. Uh, I select three different things. So first I select the air conditioner. CU stands for currency unit. It can be INR, it can be USD depending on the location. So the first I select the air conditioner. Then I ask for that, okay, I want installation also. So then I assume that installation charge is separate, that is thousand. And assume that I have a provision to have some insurance kind of thing. So assume that that insurance is valid for a year. So that also I buy. And I place this order on 31st of December. All the orders are placed together. So the moment I place the order, it may happen. Depending on the item, the organization may have different different departments who will deliver the different kind of items which are bought which are bought by the customer. So the AC, the air conditioner requirement will go to the store department. Installation will go to the services. Now services can happen only if air conditioner is delivered, and then we have insurance, which is a different department. This order will be split. It will it will be split into assume it's get got split into three different uh, uh, departments of the organization. As I just explained, the respective departments are there. This is just an example to explain the concept. Of. So obviously, uh, when customer placed the order, it will have a uh, some reference number. Let us assume that reference number is C101. So a store will have its own tracking number, as you services will have its own tracking number like this, and industry department will have its own tracking number like this. But all will be related to one particular uh, order placed by the customer. So that's we can term that as a contract number. And this bill number is very much a specific to the respective department. This is the item and this is the selling price. So the total price of which a customer is paying is 27,000. And this is the split of the items which customer has purchased. Now let us assume that air condition got delivered the day it was bought. So it was bought on 31st December and it got delivered to the customer on 31st December. Now since this, so that's a delivery. But installation occurred on 1st January 2022. It did not happen on the same day because of Now, according to the accounting standard, not only the revenue management, RMCS, rather any kind, any, according to the three, three golden rules of the uh, accounting, we should uh, recognize the revenue when the service is delivered, service or item is delivered. So we can recognize the revenue, this one, on 31st December itself. But this we cannot recognize on 31st December because the services was not over. So this has to be recognized on 1st January 20. And why it is important at least in this case, because I deliberately I chose that this, uh, this type of date because this falls in one financial year, whereas this falls in another financial year. If the financial year is, assume that financial year is same as the fiscal year, in the particular uh, organization. So 
that's why we have the different, uh, that, that, that's the revenue management concept, I think you all are aware. Uh, so, so these are the different uh, items. So since installation was done on a different day, and sir, it may happen that now, a now the store, so all these are different departments which really tracks their own orders or the tracking, but revenue recognition assume for that, they have a centralized module and they are using RMCs. Now, the, the store should send that, forget about the data delivery at this point of time. So the moment the store get this, uh, this particular line, they will send the data, let us say, they send the data on 31st of December that I have received this order to be delivered. So date to RFCS means date on which the data is sent to RFC. Assume this line was sent, since this, this line is coming from different department, it may happen that this may come on 2nd January 22, right? And assume this comes on 1st January 22. So these lines, since these lines are, these orders are to the different departments and the different departments are integrated to RMCS. So they may send the revenue, they, uh, they may send these order lines on different point of time. So this is only the order right now. They are not sending the, the uh, uh, delivery information. So when they send these data at different point of times, my RMCS system should be intelligent enough to understand that all these three lines belong to single contract. If you remember in the previous video, I said identify contract can have two different aspects. One, more related to policy, organization policy. Second, what all items are related to one particular contract. So in the second aspect, RMCS can help us and that is what the contract identification rule configuration in RMCS does. So what, when they send the information, we have extensive uh, uh, versatile uh, configuration in RMCS based on the different conditions. We can understand that all these items belong to one contract. For an example, if these departments sends this line, they are sending this particular common field. So they will be sending this line to RMCS on different dates. So all these are coming on different dates. So RMCS can help us. The configuration can help us to understand that all these three lines belongs to single contract. Two broad aspects I want to explain here related to our configuration. First point, all these are coming from different sources. Second point, Though those are coming from different sources, we must combine those to one single contract. So that is how the contract identification rule help us to identify the lines coming from different sources into one contract. Another point, the lines may come on different points of time. So there is a it's the right time to explain me one more term, which is used in RMCS module, which you will definitely see when we do the configuration. There is something called freeze date. Uh, not freeze date, I think number freeze days. I think, yeah, days. What does it do? For its contract identification rule, we enable, let us say, if I say this feed days are zero. So what happens? Assume that this line came from a store on 31st December. Since this line is referring to a particular contract identification rule, where freeze date is selected zero. So the moment this line comes, the contract will be frozen. That means on this contract, these lines cannot be added for it. So what freeze date configuration does is that, it tells that up to how many days I should wait till I freeze the contract. Once the contract is frozen, we cannot add new lines in the contract creation. Definitely if we have contract modification, that's a different story. In the contract creation, up to how many days I should wait for the lines to come. So assume that I set this as 30, 
then what happens that assume that this line came in 31st December, uh, 31st December 2021. So this contract and it created a contract as C1001. So the RMCS will wait up to 30th of January. And it will, so whatever line comes up to 30th January 22 for this contract, this attribute, it will add those lines into the same contract. If I set it to 10, it will wait up to 10 days. So that's a free test concept in RMCS. So that's one of the important things because just I was, this point was very much, uh, the stage where I was creating the business scenario was very much relevant to the Three days, so that's why I explained that particular term, which is used in RMC. I hope that is clear. Okay. So what 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 contract identification rule does that it takes all the lines which belong to one particular contract, it clubs whether the li that those lines are coming from which system, it does not. Uh, that all depends on the contract identification rule. Then we attach the source document. So source document type is nothing else but store service instance here. The different source, uh, sources, the document lines are coming from different sources and all are clubbed into one contract. Now, when it, so that's a contract identification. Now, so assume after freeze, this is the, con this is how the contract will look, right? The contract number is C101. The total price is 27,000. And these are the different distinct items within the contract. So, since these are, these are the distinct items or distinct deliverables in the contract, so it is called as performance obligation. So each performance obligation will have a different types. If you remember in the last video, I discussed the performance obligation can be of different types. So for this can be quantity type because based on quantity delivered, we uh, track the performance obligation completion. Installation, again, it will be a, it's again, we can say quantity one installation. Insurance will be more of period time. So what kind of performance obligation is that? That gets uh, derived according to the performance obligation identification. So we co completed contract identification, PO identification. Next is the transaction price. So whatever transaction price comes, what, to whatever the selling price of the item, that becomes the transaction price. So that's a transaction. Next is allocate the transaction price. Okay? Now, in this example, I will not be able to explain the how the allocation is, what is the allocation. So let me just do a change here. And the change scenario is like this. Assume that normally the organization sell these items at this, this price. So this is called standard these are the standard price, right? So we call it SSP. SSP stands for standard, no, sorry, standalone, stand alone selling price. So this is another term. So let me just note down the terms here. One, we have PO, then we have freeze days, then we have TP, transaction price, then we have SSP. So SSP is like the price of the item. If we are selling that, if we are selling that item, I just stand alone. Many times what happens that organization sells the items in a bundle, maybe as a promotion and all this. Thing. So, so individual item price, so assume, let me explain the TP allocation. So, these are the, this is the standard price of the item, but as the promotion is going on, so I say that installation will be free and the insurance, which I generally sell in 6,000, but for certain period, I'm selling the insurance at 5,000. So now the contract has this kind of details. So this is the transaction price, okay? Now, according to the, uh, according to the, accounting standard, it says the next step is 
allocate transaction cost. In this step, what we do? The TP allocation percentage we we calculate. What is the idea here? Uh, there are method that is called relative price. Let me just uh, see here. Yeah, here. Allocate the transaction price to each performance obligation. So these are these are the transaction price. We allocate it back to each performance obligation on the basis of related related stand alone selling price means SSP. So based on the SSP, we need to allocate this price on the item on the performance obligation. What is that? Let me just explain what it means. So this is the SSP. So what it says, we have to relatively allocate. So total standard total price of the contract is twenty five thousand. Now, if you see, this is the total price and this is the total selling price. So we allocate this, this one into individual items. And how do we do that? First, we calculate what is the percentage in the complete order for this particular performance obligation according to SSP. If you see 20,000 by 27,000. SSP of the performance obligation divided by the total SSP of the total SSP of the contract. Same thing we did here. Same thing we did here for all the performance obligations. Then you multiply these allocations to the total price of the contract. Though we are selling the installation free, right? Maybe the, the intent behind it, probably customer is buying his partner because we are selling the installation in free. That may be the reason. Then we cannot say that revenue for the installation should be zero. Rather, it should have some allocation of the revenue according to the, uh, according to the bundle price, right? So that is how we allocate. So transaction price allocation, let us, uh, it what it does that, it allocates the contract price according to the relative percentage decided based on SSP for the performance of it. That is what we do. The respective percentage we multiplied with the uh, with the total transaction. So this is what the third step. What we have the fourth step. What that is allocate transaction. Next, recognize revenue. So, due to time limitation, I will have to take a pause here. Uh, in the next video, we will start with recognize revenue. Then it will be a complete of the business scenario. After that, we will start doing the configuration in RMCS, where uh, I will show the in application how do we configure such as let us say whatever the things we discussed is like the different terms like a uh, freeze days, performance obligation, transaction price, content identification rules. So how do we configure that in RMC? Those things will be discussed once we complete discussion on the business. Okay. Oh, sorry. Once we complete the discussion in the next video uh, on recognized revenue, we'll start the configuration in RMC. So thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now. Do watch my next video.